What's up? It's Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. Thanks for listening to the Under the Hood podcast presented by Coors Light. Stay inside and buy your Coors Light online. Find out how at get.coorslight.com. Coors Light, take time to chill. Wrestling fans, are you ready? This is Tuesday. You people bought a ticket to see me, so shut up. Wrestling Tuesday with Jonathan Hood. First of all, Dusty Rhodes, I think what you are is a big, ugly, low-class redneck goose. That's what I think you are. Yeah, I put it. I know I put it. But I'm most of all, the baddest man around in the world today. Follow the show at Wrestling TWT on Twitter and Instagram. But remember, my fireflies, as always, I'll light the way. And all you have to do is let me in. Tuesday, Wrestling Tuesday. The bottom line is, in all my magnificence, you're going to be mine. All Night. Here's Jonathan Hood. This is Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the brand new ESPN Chicago app. Don't forget to follow along on Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling TWT. Again, it's Wrestling TWT. Also on YouTube, youtube youtube.com. Look for Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday. Catch up on interviews that you might have missed, conversations you might have missed when it comes to pro wrestling slash sports entertainment. Glad to have you in tonight. We will hear from Alexander Hammerstone the national open weight champion for MLW. MLW's got a special announcement they made earlier today. We'll talk to Hammerstone about that, his career, and more. He's one of the up-and-coming stars in pro wrestling, and so look forward to our conversation with Alexander Hammerstone of MLW. Before we hear from Alexander, let's go to NXT TakeOver, the In Your House car taking place in Orlando, Florida. You know, it's funny. In Your House, I haven't heard that phrase since the 1990s. This was a time where wrestling was not doing very well in the mid-90s, and it was an opportunity for the WWE at the time to be able to put pay-per-views out there for half the price. I believe it was like $14, $15 at the time. And the cards were okay. They were not great. A lot of B level stars or stars that were emerging that were on In Your House. But I don't remember anyone in my wrestling circle that said, you know what I miss in 2020? I miss In Your House. I miss that concept. (laughs) But it happened as they celebrate the anniversary of uh, In Your House uh, for NXT. So I watched this show on the WWE Network. And I'll go right to the main event, in which I thought was the main event. And that was for the NXT Women's Championship. A Charlotte Flair, the champion, took on Rhea Ripley and Io Shirai. My question is, is that do championships even matter in wrestling? There was a time where wrestling championships and the reign of those champions did matter. Charlotte Flair defeats Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania for the NXT Championship. And Rhea Ripley's 22, 23 years of age. Charlotte Flair, the daughter of Ric Flair, is um, a consummate pro. She definitely, if she walked away from the sport, she definitely would be a Hall of Famer. But I didn't even understand why she was the NXT champion. The only thing that I could see is is that she could be champion and then she could be able to have really good to great matches with some of these younger stars and build them up to a level, and then Flair would be defeated. That's not the case, though. I mean, WrestleMania was just a few months ago. It was in April. And Charlotte Flair was a champion, and then Io Shirai wins the title uh, on this In Your House show. And I'm thinking, Io Shirai, she's a champion now. Not Rhea Ripley, in which it was question marks even if Rhea Ripley should have lost the title to Charlotte Flair. And so my thought is is that Charlotte Flair's had, what, eight, nine, ten different championships already. She hasn't even hit her stride just as of yet as a wrestler, as a performer in the WWE. So what is the point of all this? <laughs> like, when someone becomes a champion, does it even matter anymore in 2020? When I start seeing John Cena win a championship seemingly every other month, to the point where he was like a 15-time WWE champion, I thought, okay, if you're moving the title around like a hot potato, then why why does it matter when someone wins a championship? It really doesn't matter. Some of these championships are ice cold. And so now Io Shirai is the NXT Women's Champion. 
Good match. I just don't understand why Charlotte had to lose and why Rhea Ripley could not win in that matchup. Um, I noticed that uh, Finn Balor had a really good matchup with Damian Priest. Um, that was a, a solid matchup. Uh, to see T- Tommaso Ciampa take on Karrion Cross. Cross is a newcomer to NXT. I thought that in his NXT TakeOver debut, Cross was dominant, and he took apart Ciampa. It was one of these matches where you wasn't sure exactly which way it would go, but the way Ciampa was just disassembled uh, and taken apart by Karrion Cross, that was pretty special. I, I think that that's how you build stars. Karrion Cross beat somebody. He beat one of the biggest stars in NXT in Champa in a convincing fashion. I uh, saw the North American Championship with Keith Lee defeating Johnny Gargano. Again, Keith Lee comes in, I think, in some ways the underdog, even though he was the champion, because Johnny Gargano really is a heartbeat of that brand, the NXT brand, and Keith Lee beat somebody. Uh, he beat Johnny Gargano right there in the ring, so that was a terrific matchup in itself. And there was a couple other matches that I look at, but I think we can consider 2020 the cinematic era of pro wrestling. Because if it's not AEW, it's a WWE, NXT, if you can make your match out of some kind of major motion picture, I I guess that's the thing now. Because watching Adam Cole defend his NXT championship against Velveteen Dream, (laughs) watching this just like... This is a match where it was a backlot brawl. So let me paint the picture. It's a bunch of cars that are outside around a ring that's set up. And so, it, again, it takes place outside, and it's shot like it's some kind of mini movie where there's like five or six different cameras there, and it wasn't just the standard matchup. There was a backlot brawl, and Adam Cole ends up defeating Velveteen Dream, and now Dream will never have an NXT uh, heavyweight championship match as long as Cole is a champion. Adam Cole is one of the best wrestlers in all of, it, of WWE, definitely of NXT because he's had the championship for well over a year now. But the point is, like, it's almost like wrestling has run out of ideas. In that, if you have to have these movies like Undertaker and AJ Styles and WrestleMania, or you're going to have the the Stadium Stampede match in AEW, where you have five on five and the people are wrestling all over the Jaguar Stadium, it's just very strange to me. Where everything now has to be in a cinematic way. The wrestling has always been off the wall. They've always had terrific angles and things like that. But it's interesting now that we watch wrestling. And Adam Cole has to take on Velveteen Dream in a backlot brawl match. It's a, a bar- borrowed idea from years past. But it's just, the match was, I can't even call it a match, it was just a happening. Because it wasn't like all the action took place in the ring. It's just, uh, to me, it's just like... Instead of just being able to have a live event, a live match, and have a good match in the ring, now you've got to have bells and whistles, and you have to have a director saying cut, and all these different things, and these wrestlers doing their own stunts. It's um, it's, it's just very strange right now, uh, the era that we're in. Maybe because it's COVID-19, and you just can't have in-ring matches, uh, big matches in, in ring anymore, but... Um, to me, I still believe that even during this time where there are no fans, you can still be able to tell a story in the ring. And Cole and, and Dream, I mean, they battled their ass off. It was just weird to watch now a number of these big matches taking place where you could tell that these have just been heavily edited just for our enjoyment. Coming up on TWT, we will hear from Alexander Hammerstone. We will hear from the champion. A terrific, really up-and-coming wrestler for MLW. The middle uh, openweight champion will uh, join us coming up next right here on TWT. This is Under the Hood with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. It's Under the Hood. Follow us on the gram at IGJHood and at ESPN underscore Chicago. This is Chicago's home for sports, ESPN 1000. Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday, Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the brand new ESPN Chicago app. So glad that you're with us. And we are pleased to be joined by MLW National uh, Openweight Champion Alexander Hammerstone. MLW, as you know, Court Bauer's been on this show many times. 
Very happy with MLW. Cannot wait till MLW returns to Chicago in that hot crowd at Cicero Stadium. And Alexander joins us here on ESPN 1000. Alexander, Jonathan Hood, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. How's life for you right now? Oh, man, uh, I got to say, it's a, I mean, just like everyone else, it's, uh, it's been an adjustment. It's different. Uh, every day is a little bit uh, strange, but uh, all in all, I can't complain. I'm just uh, itching to get back to wrestling. What does it mean to you, Alex, to be at the top of your profession as the national open weight champion for over a year? So a lot of us, you can uh, you can be able to accomplish something for a little bit, a few months, maybe a, a you know a few uh, here and there, but you're at the top of your profession. What does that mean to you to hold that championship for so long? I mean, it means it means everything to me. Uh, it's it's got to be probably my proudest uh, achievement in all pro wrestling, and uh, it's one of those things like you know you bring up it's it's been a year and I feel like I just won it, but then at the same time when I look back I realize all the things I've got to do uh, while being champion. Um, but I mean it's it's it means everything. Uh, you know, this is a sport where we're always trying to get a little bit higher, climb to the top of the mountain. And then once you get there, the goal is to stay there and, you know, to, to set the standard and hopefully um, make this a championship that has a, a good lineage and a good history. And, you know, five, ten years from now, people are talking about it because I set the standard uh, with the first reign. Alexander Hammerstone from MLW on Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN Chicago app. So I want to get your thoughts on the state of MLW right now. As I mentioned, every time you you come to Chicago, you guys are selling out. And I told Bauer the last time you guys were here, uh, one of the last times you were here, it was Cubs versus Sox weekend, which is huge. You know, like with two baseball rivalries now, source uh, the South Side and the North Side going back and forth, and you guys sold out that day, that Saturday. And I was like, wow, like you. I told Bauer, I say, I, I don't know if you guys understand like how big that is, how busy the city is, but yet people came to see your show. So, what are your thoughts on where MLW is going right now? I mean, I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm really happy to be part of you know a company that's on the rise and and continually growing and just taking those steps uh, to continue like an upward uh, trajectory. But I think it really speaks to to Court and his vision because. Um, you know, he, he's got this vision of what he wants to put out there uh, wrestling-wise, and, and you find a lot of like-minded uh, wrestlers, a lot of like-minded writers, talent, et cetera. And uh, he really doesn't compromise. He, w- he really doesn't budge. You know, sometimes um, there's people who are, you know, will stand up and say, you should do this, you should do that. But it's, it's MLW is unapologetically MLW. And uh, it's really cool to be part of a, a wrestling brand that, you know, undoubtedly providing something different, providing, you know, an alternative in a lot of ways to a lot of the other pro- uh, products out there. So, you know, I'm excited because like you said, you know, we're able to go into these towns, we're able to sell out. We have a hardcore diehard fan base. And uh, I, I think it's just going to keep continuing to grow. I told court to give you all the money, literally just give you all the money. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if how much money he's given you with the new deal, but I told him, it's like, if you're going to give somebody the money, give Hammerstone all the money. And he hasn't returned <laughs> my calls since. So, <laughs> Well, it's probably because he had to shut off his phone bill because uh, he did end up giving me, in fact, all of the money. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I said, give Hammerstone all the money and lock him up for as long as possible because that the, that's the guy. Working with, with Holiday and MJF, what was it like to be able to be part of that, that trio? Because, you know, one of the things that wrestling has been founded on is, is factions. And you guys really were able to set the, the world on fire because you guys are so unique together. What was that like? Oh, uh, man. It's, uh, looking back, going to definitely be one of the fondest uh, parts of my entire career. Uh, going to be something I never forget. Uh it definitely, man, like it, it exploded into something uh, way cooler than I think any of the three of us anticipated. Um, just, you know, being three fully capable individuals, um, we knew we could make it work, but we didn't know to what degree it was going to take off and, you know, become something of its own. So it, it was so cool, so fun, uh, such a learning experience in so many ways, especially for a guy like me, just because, you know, I am – you know, pretty selfish when it comes to the attention. I want to reach out and grab the br- brass ring, b- break the gl- glass ceiling and mm-hmm. all the other cliches. I want the most attention. So 
to be told, hey, you're going to be put in a faction was kind of like a, a, you know, a WTF moment. I was like, well, I don't know if I want to be doing this. But <laughs> as soon as we got the ball rolling, it was clear that it was like such a good idea, you know, so natural. The chemistry really just evolved, you know, so quickly, almost overnight and uh, provided so many cool memories for MLW. And it's, it's fun to go and watch like, the birth of you know our catchphrases and all these moments that now people still reference and uh it all started with the dynasty alex hammerstone from mlw the national open weight champion with jonathan hood on tuesday wrestling tuesday on espn 1000 and the espn chicago app you've accomplished a lot already in your career alex but what was it like when you were able to finally perfect the hulk hogan 91 tan you know, uh, as much as I appreciate that compliment, I still don't know if I have perfected the 91 tan. It's, uh, <laughs> it's really that, you know, evasive, uh, all-encompassing goal, right? So we're always chasing it. You could always be a little bronzer, a little deeper color, a little more sheen on the shine. You know what I'm talking about? Right. So I can't say, can't say I've mastered it. I can say I've, uh, I'm coming close, and every day I strive to be that much better when it comes to the Hogan tan. I mean, the, the, but there is something unique, and for those that have not, I don't know what we're talking about. Just go to Google Images and just look up. Just put in ninety one Hulk Hogan. There's something <laughs> about his. There's something about that skin tone that's so unique. Like, listen, you, know, you guys, you guys tan all the time. I mean, you know, you know, the old wrestlers going to the the tanning bed and being there for hours and hours and hours and hours and not even working out. They just work on the tan. But there's something odd about. The hue of of Hogan's skin in '91. Can you explain what that is? I mean, so the, the thing nowadays is we've uh, we've come a long way with tanning technology. We've learned how to filter out the harmful rays, mm -hmm. uh, but back then it was just straight up skin damage. <laughs> Not only that, you know, today the, the spray tan is very prominent, so you get these these bronze, this gold. It's a very beautiful color, but back then. It was just a sign of extreme willingness to damage your skin unapologetically. <laughs> and that's why you end up with Hulk Hogan looking like a burnt gas station hot dog. And <laughs> it's just a, a hue of its own. I just, I mean, it's a distraction to me because it's like slaughters toward the end of his career, but yet he's still like the, you know, the WWF champion at the time. And he's taking on Hogan is back and forth. And all I can see is just like Hogan with this odd tan during that time in 91. Just, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, I, I've never seen anything like it, quite frankly. So. It's, it's its own thing. It's its own cultural phenomenon. And I'm glad to be bringing attention back to such an important time in history. <laughs> Is there someone, Alex, that you've uh, admired in the business when you were growing up? Um, I mean, there's uh, a handful of people. Um, I think obviously just from, you know, the type of image I present, I was always obsessed with the like physically larger than life guys, you know, um, Triple H and the attitude just era, just with his hulking physique was just like, wow, it's like, the guys that look like superheroes, and then, you know, as I got a little bit older, looking at guys like Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle, guys that were just super physical with their styles. Like, I always loved, like, I always loved the showmanship, you know, the the pageantry of pro wrestling um, when I first started watching. But as I grew a little bit older, the guys who just brought this super physical style, the super aggression to the ring, and, and just really, like, you know, kind of, like, made you take a step back and go, man, like, I, I wouldn't want to get in there with that guy. Like those those guys really captured my attention. Uh, I, I see that um, that you have some like some some trunks that you're giving away to people. Are you you selling those things, or are you just give them away? Some of your custom design uh, Hammerstone trunks. I'm selling them, um, and the, the the thing is just basically, you know, as I've evolved through my pro wrestling career, I've gone through a plethora of different you know styles and images and thing you know characters i was trying to present and basically when i joined with mlw i kind of cut ties with all that i kind of you know said like i'm gonna stop trying to play this character act like this guy you know so but at the same time that left me with you know a lot of tights and you know stuff that a lot of people see as memorabilia and you know a little chapter of the history of my career so all those uh all those little snippets of history from the Hammerstone of yesteryear are now available for purchase.
for a limited time because we're we're running low on stock now. <laughs> Just a couple okay. left. I see also on MLWShop.com you've got your summer uh, Hammerstone Tour T-shirt. These things are going to be a collector's item for for a while here. People are going to be wearing these for like the next ten or twenty years uh, while you're still in the business. So. I see that this shirt, it, does it come just in green or is it different colors? Um, so so um, when you go through the MLW shop website, you're able to select uh, all different colors, all different styles, whether it's V-neck, tank top, muscle shirt. So it's really cool. But the, the standard issue one is that bright neon green, which, you know, was, was really cool because I think it like having like a summer themed T-shirt with like the beach party it would be lame if it was just another plain black wrestling T-shirt. But if that's your thing, you can still get it in plain black. No, we can't. We can't do this. I think it, it's up to you to make the wrestling fan evolve, man. I think it's up to you, Hammerstone, because I mean the the black and white T-shirt is just so just lame now. I mean, it, I go to UFC shows and people are still wearing like NWO and DX stuff. I'm like, oh, that's where the rest some of the wrestling fans went. Yeah. <laughs> there are the stands at UFC like still wearing that stuff, but it's up to you to to bring the color back into wrestling. Oh, I feel that, and uh, I always uh, I'm always blown away because you know I I of course you know release you know, my own t-shirts, but then with, through MLW, they released the Hammerstone t-shirts as well. And I'm always blown away at how c- cool and creative they're able to get these designs. And they'll take a catchphrase and they just run with it and make a whole shirt out of it. And it's always awesome. Like I'm never let down. And, you know, we work together very intimately on the process. And like, I'm always just like blown away by how cool the t-shirts that are coming out uh, that they're able to make. So I'm always really happy with them. Alex, there's always someone that has a story of when they started working out and felt like I could do something more with my body. Was there someone that influenced you to do that? Or when did you begin saying, okay, I can start working my body and I could really be able to do this well? Um, so it's kind of funny because um, it, it almost sounds made up. But, um, I, you know, like I said, I was kind of like obsessed with the big physiques from a very young age. So on and off through my early teens, I would kind of – lift weights a little bit but i never thought like of trying to be a big muscular guy just it just didn't seem reasonable or feasible or realistic so i was mostly just kind of trying to like get a six pack i was doing a lot of running uh and then just some weights here and there in my house um and that trend kind of continued as i got older and older and older um and then when i saw the movie 300 it it, that (laughs) that kind of changed my perspective because like I was watching this movie in the theaters and I was like, holy crap, like, that's so cool. I want to look like those guys. And I just remember, like, I I was already working out, but then I just went, you know what? What if I just started eating as much food as I could? (laughs) And um, being that I was about 17 years old and had a fast metabolism, um, pretty much everything I ate just started turning into muscle. And, you know, I I got obsessed almost overnight with the idea of just getting as big and muscular as I could. here we are 10, 12 years later, and I'm still equally obsessed. That That's good. No, obsession. You know what? Some f- people say obsession is uh, bad. It's a good thing, Alex, because look at you. Look at you. All, yeah, all you're I missing mean, is the 91 tan. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's all about how, you, uh, how you're able to aim that obsession. Yeah, oh, very yeah, actually, very well said. I continue to read through MLW some big news and it's just typical Court Bauer, always teasing stuff and like, here comes this wrestler in, here comes this event and all this stuff. What, what's this What's this big news that uh, just continues to permeate my social media about MLW? What's your big news? Can you give us a glimpse of what's going on there? Oh, well, um, I think the news actually just dropped today that um, we're going to be available on a new platform. It's the DAZN network. i would not exactly sure if that's oh. pronounced days on or yeah, the zone. But, yeah, but it's pretty much it's like the Netflix of sports. You know, they have boxing, they have all kinds of different fight um, networks, basically all in one location. And we have what like something like eight million subscribers to the network. So it's just um, a whole new avenue that we're going to be displaying MLW on. And this isn't canceling the deal with BN Sports. This is in addition to that. So it's just a whole new um, avenue that people are going to be able to see MLW on, going to reach new eyes in new countries. And it's just like I always say, Court, um, Court does a good job 
of making the right moves at the right times, taking it step by step by step. He never jumps in the deep end and drowns. He makes calculated decisions, and this is just you know the next example of, of a, a move that's going to get MLW new markets, new homes, new eyes on the product. And I'm excited for what it means for the, the company, especially once we get back to business and back to wrestling. Okay, that is a huge deal. I mean, I'm, I'm in media, so let me just – let me just smarten you up on this, Alex. That is huge <laughs> to be on the zone. That's that's good stuff because now it's taking. First of all, your your programming is across the country and around the world, but now being on the zone, that's a whole different kettle of fish. That's a big platform for MLW. So congratulations on that. So now more and more people can see your greatness. Yeah, it's exactly. It's 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 one of those things that like it's always fun because um, as much as court teases you know the general public he does the same thing with the athletes a lot of times so we're sitting there reading the tweets just like everybody else wondering what it was and then when he released it you know and i got to reading about this network and this you know what this means for the company it was just like such a cool moment and such a pretty much like it just got me that much more excited you know to get back to back to doing what we do I mean, I mean, I'm sure Tom Lawler or the Von Ericks or Davy Boy Smith Jr. and or Mance Warner thinks it's big for them, but really, it's really big for the National Openweight Champion. Let's let's just put it out there. I mean, they, I'm sure they think, oh, we're going to be on the zone. No, actually, this is your network now, Alex. All right, that's you and me. We we're, we're thinking we're on the same wavelength. I like the way you think. <laughs> it's like I mean, I mean, all these other guys feel like, oh, we're, we are going to be bigger now. No, no, that's it's actually Hammerstone's network now. So let's let's slow it down here. You know, so that's. I hope uh, Jacob Fatu's not listening because he's dangerous. Uh, as we talk to <laughs> he, Alexander Hammerstone with Jonathan Hood on ESPN 1000 and the ESPN Chicago app on Tuesday, Wrestling Tuesday. Is there someone that you want to face, Alex, in 2020 that you have never faced before? Ooh, well, I mean, I think you just, uh, I think you just kind of um, foreshadowed it by saying, you know, you hope Jacob Fatu's not listening because I hope he is listening because. Not that I've never faced him, but I've never faced him in MLW. I've never faced him in a major league wrestling ring, and it's been years since our paths have crossed. Um, earlier in our careers, we you know we got to lock horns, and then we kind of went our separate ways. We kept growing as wrestlers, and then you know by the the crazy way the world works, we both ended up in major league wrestling, and uh, we have somehow managed to stay off each other's paths, stay out of each other's way, but you know. The the water's getting to the boiling point with uh, with me, you know, basically being the number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship for months now. And I'm just, I'm thinking uh, there's not much that's going to get in my way of stopping me from getting that match uh, with Jacob Fatu. That, uh, that's got to be here in Chicago, hopefully. <laughs> because <laughs> cause that, there's a sense of danger when, the, when Contra's out there. I'm always looking over my shoulder because the music hits, and you're like, where are they coming from? Because you don't see them right away. And it's like, okay, let me, let me check the, all the exits, make sure I know where to go because those guys. But that should be a hell of a match. Hopefully the court could book it here. Yeah, I mean, Chicago is one of our hot, hottest marketplaces. Like you said, it's always a sellout. The fans are extra wild there. Um, and I, not only do I hope it's, you know, in Chicago or at least a market that can give us that same energy, but I hope, uh, I hope it's on a return to pay-per-view. Yes, absolutely. Uh, lastly, and I appreciate your time, Alex. I just want to find out what's it like wrestling in Mexico and the differences uh, wrestling in the States and in Mexico. So I've, I've seen your, your videos of you play, uh, being able to perform in Mexico and it's like, Wow, the the crowd gives you a lot of energy, and I just enjoy watching you on some of these other platforms along with MLW. Um, well, the crowd they do give you a lot of energy. That's that that is true, but uh, they give you a lot of other stuff too. You know, I think the first time we were in Mexico, I had to worry because uh, I handed my jacket off to MJF, and next thing you know, somebody in the crowd had swiped it, and it was making its way through the aisles, and we were very quickly able to get it back but there's that to worry about there's fans throwing beer at you there's fans you know swearing obscenities at you it gets really wild but at the end of the day it's crowd energy it's crowd interaction it's another tool to play with um so i don't know if it's my favorite place in the world to wrestle just because there's that almost that sense of danger that sense of you know if you rile these people up too much you know 
you're on the verge of a uh, of potential riot, but it's uh, that's a fun tightrope to walk. It's a fun uh, it's a fun energy to play with. It's a fun dynamic to play with. And you know what? Like also the pharmacies in Mexico are just they're great. They're just <laughs> something else about those pharmacies. I, think. <laughs> I really love. Got to got to put that over <laughs> again with that. Yes, I've seen this on the show, so I know exactly what you mean. Um, so uh, Alex, uh, yeah, and by the way, you're right. The, the crowds there in Mexico, it's uh, it, it's it's special to them. And it, because you guys um, do your shows here in Chicago, it's in Cicero at the Cicero Stadium. And uh, when you come out or when Fatu comes out, even Myron Reed, a lot of guys are hitting the rail. A lot of fans are hitting the rail. They they want to get in there a little close. So it's uh, it gets a little hot <laughs> for, for you yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah. That's yes. an understatement. Yeah, there's no question. It gets very hot. So I'm glad you spent some time with us here in Chicago. Looking forward to uh, getting back to some normalcy when we can be able to come to arenas and see MLW again. But the big news that Alex has dropped on us is that MLW is coming to the zone, which is a huge platform along with BN Sports um, and on YouTube. So it just add another log on the fire to what is uh, MLW. So I'm glad you spent some time, champ, and I'm so glad um, that things are working out well for you. Hold on to that championship. I look forward to seeing you in the ring again. Hell yeah, thanks. It was a fun experience. I had a great time talking to you, brother. Thank you. It's uh, Alex Hammerstone, the national openweight champion for well over a year now with us here as MLW breaks the news here that they are going to be on the zone, which is going to be great for 2020 and beyond for Court Bowers Major League Wrestling. Tuesday Wrestling Tuesday right here on ESPN 1000. This is Under the Hood with Jonathan Hood. Hi, everybody. On ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports.